Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and recently we've been discussing the rosary, its history, and its possible origins. This time, we'll talk about the promises of the rosary. As it's widely believed that St. Dominic received the rosary from Mary in a vision, so there were also many promises made about the rosary given to St. Dominic and Blessed Alain de la Roche for people who pray the rosary devoutly. As with the St. Dominic story, these promises are not something that Catholics are required to believe, but they hold a special place in Catholic history and devotional life, and I think they're more probably true than not. There are 15 promises of the Rosary, just as there are 15 joyful, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries in the Rosary itself. Promise 1. Whosoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the Rosary shall receive signal graces. A signal grace is a special grace from God which may or may not be obvious to the person who has it, but which clues other people into the goodness of God. Promise 2. I promise my special protection and the greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. Given the great amount that Mary accomplished at Lepanto and at Fatima and at Lourdes, we should be very eager for her help and protection in our own spiritual journeys. Promise 3. The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. Even normal prayers help people to grow in holiness and protect them against sin, and a prayer like the Rosary, chosen by God as a weapon against evil and devoted to the heart of his own mother, and which also encourages meditation and personal reflection, is several times more effective in protecting people from sin, vice, and heresy. Promise 4. It will cause good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities, and will lift them to the desire for eternal things. Oh, that souls would sanctify themselves by this means. It's important to remember that the good things of this world are only pale reflections of the good things of heaven, which is why they always end up being ruined or destroyed. This is, or rather should be, more obvious in this current generation than it has been in any other generation in human history. The Rosary can help us keep our attention on what our real goals should be. Promise 5. The soul which recommends itself to me by the recitation of the Rosary shall not perish. Mary makes special requests of God for those who pray the Rosary to save their souls from hell. Promise 6. Whosoever shall recite the Rosary devoutly, applying himself to the consideration of its sacred mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his justice. He shall not perish by an unprovided death. If he be just, he shall remain in the grace of God and become worthy of eternal life. Conquered by misfortune does not mean suffer misfortune. We still have to endure suffering. What it means is that God will give to those who pray the rosary the special grace needed to endure and press on despite suffering and to remain steadfast in the faith regardless. This promise also implies special mercies granted by God, and an unprovided death refers to the sacrament of extreme unction, the anointing of the sick. God gives people who pray the rosary the chance for forgiveness in this way. Promise 7. Whoever shall have a true devotion for the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. Here the sacraments of confession, the Eucharist, and extreme unction are promised more directly to those who pray the rosary. Those who make a good confession right before death and don't commit serious sins afterwards are assured, eventually, of eternal life. Promise 8. Those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life, and at their death, the light of God and the plentitude of his graces. At the moment of death they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. Any person who can share the light of God and the merits of the saints will be drawn towards God in holiness, as Elisha was when God gave him twice the spirit of Elijah. Combined with the last promise, this paints a picture of a person who is given exceptional holiness when they die. Promise 9. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. Many, many people will require time in purgatory to pay the temporal debt for their sins. 
but Mary offers a special effort to liberate people from purgatory into heaven much more quickly than they otherwise would have if they prayed the rosary. Promise 10. The faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. Those who seek greater holiness on earth obtain greater glory in heaven, and the rosary is one of the best methods for seeking holiness. Promise 11. You shall obtain all you ask of me by recitation of the rosary. This is a true promise for the granting of all wishes, though, like many such promises, no indication is given of how long it will take for those wishes to be granted, or whether they will be granted in the precise way that we'd prefer. Many wishes can only be granted in heaven, since doing so in any other way would require miracles that would not save and might even endanger souls. The granting of those kinds of wishes will almost inevitably be postponed until they can be granted safely. Promise 12. All those who propagate the Holy Rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. Those who help teach others to pray the Rosary will receive extra help with their various needs, though not necessarily their desires. Promise 13. I have obtained from my Divine Son that all the advocates of the Rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of death. God offers the greatest angels and saints of heaven to help support and guide those who encourage the use of the rosary. Promise 14. All who recite the rosary are my sons and brothers of my only son, Jesus Christ. To be a member of the family of God is the highest honor one can hope for, and gives us access to a boundless inheritance. The book of Revelation refers to all those who keep God's commandments and testify to Jesus as children of Mary, and the rosary encourages people in this direction. Finally, promise 15. Devotion to my rosary is a great sign of predestination. Predestination refers to those chosen by God for heaven in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Who is predestined for heaven? Those who seek to conform themselves faithfully to his Son, as it says in the verse itself. If we, out of love for God, try to conform our conduct to the commands of Jesus, we can be part of that predestined group, and one great sign of being part of that group is praying the Holy Rosary. I've enjoyed this series on Mary and the Rosary, and I may do more on some other Marian devotionals at some later time, but before moving on into the next season, I want to do just one episode on a topic that was requested. Next time, what is the filioque? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.